Yeah, so as you were talking at your tables about the pluses, minuses, and zeros, what were some of the things that came up for you as uh, as you're looking at those? That, did anyone have any uh, emotions or thoughts about those pluses, minuses, and zeros as you were going through that list? About your personal experience, either growing up or as an adult right now? Any thoughts about that? Yes. So her, what her comment was is that um, that that the news was was pretty negative, and they just show what makes money, right? Other folks, as you were looking at the pluses, minuses, and zeros, what came up for you? turning their children over to someone who is smarter than them. So why are you, as a, as a parent, why, and you're the teacher, why are you asking me things that you're supposed to already know that's better than what I know? Because otherwise, I teach them myself, right? Yeah, and the same kinds of things in the workplace, right? So, um, so, so what school means and how school uh, how we're to interact with folks um, is, is very important, and then also, you know, in a lot of time, a lot of times we make assumptions about things that uh, that are false assumptions. So, for example, I run a um, a program called Fred. I don't run it, but um, I help with a team of people who run this this program called Fred. Fathers read every day, and what we've done is we've taken Head Start dads. And we, uh, and when we say dads, we're not necessarily talking about biological folks. So it could be a grandfather, an uncle, uh, a male adult in the family. Um, and we teach them how to read books. Now, that might sound funny to, to say teach someone how to read a book, but how do you read a book if you can't read the language? You can still read the book. And so we, we walk dads through this process of, you know, how do you use this book as a teaching tool? Are there colors that you can pick out in the book? Even if you can't read the words yourself, are there numbers of things that you can count with the kids? Because what we recognize is that it's not the, it's not the content of the book that's important. What's important? The relationship, right? For us as individuals, whatever our chart looks like or doesn't look like, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. It's not our, you know, for some of us, we grew up on a farm or we grew up in a rural area or, or maybe we grew up out of this country so we don't even know all the nuances of what it means to be in, in this country yet, right? Those things are not our fault. However, the building of the relationships is our responsibility. Is our responsibility. So, um, anyone drive a car? Anyone ridden in a car, right? Does that car have blind spots? <laughs> yes. And where it, where are the blind spots? So, typically on the corners, maybe in the back. If you drive a Hummer, the whole thing is a blind spot. Right? For the car that you drive, are you 
to blame for the blind spots that car has. You are not to blame. You weren't on the design team for the car that you drive. However, you are responsible for those blind spots. And so how do you find your blind spots in a car? There's basically two ways, right? So you can crash into something. Oh! Or you what? You have to turn around and you have to look for them. So this is the interesting thing about implicit bias. You have to look for your bias if you ever want to find it. You have to look for it. And you do that through questioning yourself. You look at you by looking at your own motivations and looking at the motivations of others, right? So is this person really a jerk or do they have jerk ways? Because if they have jerk ways, we can talk about that. But if they are a jerk, I can't do anything about that. And I wonder what they might say about me. So when we recognize that we, we're all looking for safety, significance, and belonging. We can actually make change. A couple of concepts that I want us to think about is on that same page is this idea that um, equality is really about being fair and making sure everybody gets the same thing, right? That's what equality is. It's fair. Equity is unfair, right? Equity is unfair. I, I, I just read a note about an unfair situation where someone gave money back to the organization because someone gave them something in return. That was unfair to do that. But it was the right thing to do. So when we talk about this idea of equity, what we're talking about is getting people what they need and sometimes that means that different people need different things. And then lastly, is this idea of inclusion. Um, inclusion really is the concept of lowering unnecessary bars, getting rid of unnecessary bars. Because people want to just focus on, you know, well, you're lowering the bar. We're, we're asking, what is the necessity of that bar? Who does this bar serve, right? Does our application process serve someone? And who does that serve? Are there ways around it? Are there ways that we can supplement it? Are there ways that we can help people to achieve those things? That is inclusion. And lastly, this idea of uh, diversity at letter C. Diversity is looking at our commonalities and our differences. And recognizing that the more you're able to find the similarities in another person, the less strange they get. The less strange they get. And then lastly, on the back page, because ultimately, we're looking for the dignity and honor of being human. Is dignity something that you have or something that you can give? Do you have dignity or do you give dignity? Both, right? Both. The most kind thing you can do, the most... Uh, the closest thing you can do to loving to, to loving someone is to actually listen to them. You give people dignity when you listen. Uh, honor is the highest level of respect. Um, being, please raise your hand if you purchased a ticket or you passed the test that made you eligible to be born. <laughs> None of us have done anything to bring ourselves here. We're just responding to an invitation. I don't want to think about how that invitation was sent. But we, we're all responding to, to an invitation. And we're trying to figure out what it means to be human. And human is an interesting word because it has two definitions. One is a noun, being a biped, having opposable thumbs, a big brain, and a belly button. Human. Human is also an adjective. And what do adjectives do? They describe the noun. So how do we, as human beings, want to be described? What does it mean to be human? It means to love and be loved. To conquer obstacles. To not know everything. 
in one of my discussions, I was talking about blind spots, and they said, well, will we ever get rid of them? And I said earlier, I don't believe so. I think we just manage them. Because if we knew everything, we would no longer be human. We would be what? Google. We'd be Google. <laughs> <laughs> we would be Google. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that from now on. All right. And so our objective, particularly when working with, with, with our clients and working with our families, is to, to try to see what it is that they want. What are their goals? What are their aspirations? And we already have a good clue that we're all looking for very much similar things. Whether I... Uh, whether. Uh, no matter how I how I approach another person, if I am looking for our commonalities, I certainly will see those commonalities. Um, because we're all trying to get dignity and honor and make human by gaining uh, significance, belonging, and safety. My name is Andre Cohen. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.